have one person on digitally. Also, different things that we're offering. Hello, I got. We have on digitally. Also. Okay, I just muted you, David. Uh, for the other people that are watching right now, you're welcome to also jump on the call. We can put the link here. Um, oh, that's not the link. Let me get that real quick. We're really excited. It's a first for us, uh, our first live stream uh, call. So that's really nice. We're happy to have uh, many people right now. And we go, we will go really soon into like what all system network uh, is offering as uh, services and program. Um, maybe you could start showing people around the, the website. Oh, you're not. Uh, we could do it present now. You're in. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are now uh, showing you our website. And on the first page, we have at the very bottom, if you scroll down, you have different like service that we are offering. One of the thing that all system networks is doing is uh, creating different event through the year. Hopefully this year we'll see. We have our first event happening last March in Austin. And we'll see with the pandemic how it will go. But our, our target is to gather people interesting in eco livelihood and having also specialists, so people that are actually started eco businesses or people also in the permaculture uh, area that are working either like starting a business or creating like nonprofit and trying like to make those connections between like people that are interesting in the subject and having like a direct contact with people that actually has done it bef before them. So those events, uh, we try to have like three events this year. Hopefully we will have one in uh, the Northeast and probably one in the West Coast at the end of this year. We also offer a workshop on different topic. Um, most of them are, uh, mainly related to eco-entrepreneur and uh, eco-livelihood. We want to create a series of uh, workshop also for women. We have um, this idea that we really want to support women because uh, we feel like uh, promoting more like equality and having also a strong support for women and women of colors as well. 
So this is uh, something that all system network want to promote and support. We also offering a, a consultation. So we have a 15 minute uh, consultation free uh, call. And then uh, we are open to support any organization or uh, people that want to start their own eco village or want to start uh, an eco business. We are willing to take some time and to like connect those people with specialists. We will also those like free uh, specialists that could like for the that could jump on those networking calls and for, for you to be able to talk and ask directly your question to those people that we have like highlighted on our website and we already like connect to it. So can we go on the page with the specialist? Yeah, so yeah, that was really a great overview. Um, I think specifically what we want to talk about this time is the next few times that we have these uh, third Thursday calls, we're going to ask different specialists to come on and um, allow a question and answer uh, through that. And this time we've prepared, um, go, oh, not the event, sorry, the wrong one. Uh, so you, it's just right up here in the right hand menu, and you can see that we've built a whole resource library. Um, and there's permaculture, eco village, financial, and WSN original resources specialists, um, and marginalized people's resources. So um, if you click on each one, we're on permaculture right now. And you can see there is networks, um, different networks that you can get involved with and see what they're doing. Some of them more local than others. Um, I was involved specifically with the Awesome Permaculture Guild. Uh, there's a whole permaculture project with uh, Kina, and then the North American Permaculture Network, etc. Then we have the resources here, um, our research database, permaculture, scholar resources, etc. And then ecopreneurs or eco entrepreneurs in permaculture. So yeah, that's just one of these links. If you're really interested in that, um, then we have eco villages. There's also networks resources we have this great book here um the enterprising eco villager actually the, the link i need to fix so hold tight if you're really interested in that book <laughs> I, i'm going to figure out how we can get it because it's actually online and open source um and then there's different eco villages here that are focused on eco entrepreneurship which is really exciting um then we have the financial resources which is a really important part and something that we're really trying to gain a, a strong suit and have more of a focus with the whole systems network um and then specifically what leone was talking about here is specialists so um you can see here there we go, the different specialists that are online and these are people that we ask specifically if they'd like to be on our website. Um, and as you can see here, there's Frankie, there's Diana Lee Cushion. Uh, you can see she's the author of Praying a Life Together. It's a really great book. We have Robert Hall, who is also the author of the Enterprising Eco Village. And we also have met him in person. All these people we've met in person have and have talked to and like to continue partnerships with them. Um, he, he was also the president of one region of the Global Eco Village Network. Mark Lakeman, um, he, his work has been really well known. He creates. Uh, CT repair. Yeah, yeah, do you want to talk about it a little bit? He creates like those like uh, corner in the middle of the of cities where he, he creates like. 
design uh, about like a uh, huge it's basically at uh, intersection in cities and that creates a really nice tall and uh, a dynamic between people that live in that city so people start to talk to each other and start like wondering what they are doing and it creates that whole like super energy where people could share ideas and and just by stopping and uh, being like amazed by that beautiful piece of art that just like is in the middle of their mm -hmm. their city yeah and he's really innovative and um, we're appreciative that we're able to meet him and talk to him and he's really excited about being a specialist mm -hmm. on ours and he does great consultation for urban areas uh, really innovative and then we have Mayana Ludwig we also have a few more people jumping on uh, so hello to the different people watching us live from Facebook. And we also have one person, David, here who's actually on the meet. And just so you know, if you're watching live, you're able to ask us questions um, after we're done with this small presentation of our website. And also people like David are able to ask questions live and talk about their own specific projects. So that's definitely a perk. If you um, go to the link to join, you're able to jump on and talk about it. Otherwise, you're welcome to keep watching and hear what, what we're talking about. So yeah, um, Mayana is part of the Fellowship for Intentional Community, and she's also a consultant. Um, and she's wrote, written a few different books as well. She's really into um, helping with marginalized people and also creating communities. She's created her own community as well. Um, and we have Taylor Monroe, who is one of the directors at Austin Permaculture Guild, and she has been creating lots of awesome designs in, uh, in, or, in and around Central Texas. And we're just uh, love her work. I've worked with her closely, closely for many years. And then lastly, for right now, we have Stephen Torrance, and he uh, is steeped in the Eco Village network uh, and has traveled around. Um, and currently, he's doing his own consultations for human centered tech uh, consulting. So, check out his website. And he's really a lot more about creating apps and websites and really helping uh, empowerment on it technological scale. He's also involved with the Bright Future Network, um, which I also am a, an alumni of, and it's a way to get involved with a whole different group of people um, with Robert Gilman, who is the eco the person who would termed the word eco village in the 1990s and he's created his own network that is kind of a platform and a forum to have uh, really in-depth conversations. So yeah, I, that's about what we have here. Feel free to go on growingsystems.org slash service slash resources. It's really easy to find uh, if you just go on growingsystems.org and it's this resource tab right here. Um, we have a lot of different things happening. We also have our own resources that we've been creating, mapping trends in the, in the permaculture and eco village transition town network. Um, and we have our Ecopreneurs Toolkit available for sale here. Um, and yeah, we're working on having other information out. Do you have any anything else to add as far as what we've been offering? Well, I think also uh, the goal of those calls that we are offering like uh, monthly, uh, those networking calls, are, are to create also a um, cross like promotional platform and a place also to share resources and idea. So if ever you think of like a specific person that you know that could be like also be part of our list of specialists, like feel free to share with us. We really like welcome new idea and uh, new people mm -hmm. on board it will be really nice and awesome that we can like like share those resources together and for like all system network platform to be more like complete with a lot more specialists have you talked about our events a little bit yeah. yes I did. Um, 
and you can go on. so i i rolled over that a few people that are on the call actually went to our events as well we're planning on having four of them uh per year so far we've had our first one um and you can here on our events and see which ones are coming up. And we have our featured event emergence. Uh, Just that. Uh, yeah, and so you could see kind of some of the pictures that have happened and things that we would like to keep happening as far as booths and specialists that are involved. Um, and we also have panels. There's different things you can see um, as far as we've uploaded our different panels and you can download those uh oh, that's all my workshops uh, workshops media yeah so yeah. anyways those are different things that are happening and we'd love to keep see seeing them happen so that's that's it for our pitch and what we're doing and we hope that you keep um get, getting on these calls either they're streaming or or video or uh the the meet link it's really easy you just press on the link and then you're jumped on to this call and uh yeah come and talk about your own what what you're doing and and then in the future hear from other specialists but right now we're going to open up the floor to some questions that you might have and um so it, if you're here and watching feel free to ask those questions now also we're gonna hear from David, if he has anything, and he also has some ideas that we're interested in hearing from him. So, David, um, if you'd like to share a little bit of, you've also been to one of our um, workshops, our paid workshops. So, I'm curious where you're at and in your perspective and what you would like to continue to see happen. Um, yeah, I think you guys are, are on. On point, there's uh, like this, this is a ongoing need in sustainable communities um, is how to, how to make an actual income. And um, I've been actually, I, I made a post on Facebook asking friends, like, what is the one thing that holds me back um, from moving or living in a sustainable eco village? And one of the biggest things is usually like money to afford to to put money into buy languages so yeah definitely um do you are you looking to have your own piece of land as well um someday yeah i think that would be awesome yeah and you uh i know have been involved in different like you've gotten education from different eco village spaces um and you've also been involved with the global eco village network or you went to uh, um, their event and, or the north american event and then um online calls you want to talk about that a little bit um yeah actually i i been um uh, i went through gaia education Dot org. And they have a village design education course that I went to um, in North America. And, and then I did their train the trainers, which is a course that trains you to be a facilitator. So you can um, be part of a five week course of um, teaching people how to be village designers um, at a and um, I just have one more to finish. It's a it's an online aspect. Um, then I'll be a main facilitator with Gaia Education. And um, right now I just signed up for their online course in ecosystem restoration design, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's actually like create a project of restoring an ecosystem, whether in agriculture or area or urban area um, or in a natural area. So I think ecosystem restoration is, is a big 
need right now um, with climate change and all. Yeah. And, um, there's there's a lot of a lot of opportunity there. Sorry, I'm trying to do multiple things at once, but I'm really curious. You're doing all these different things, and and you're on this call um, talking about you know like what what specialists can do for you, and also what you're wanting to do. And I'm curious, like, why are you do getting all of these trainings, and what's next for you, like? <laughs> Um, well, like I, I'm kind of bringing it all together. I, right now, I'm in the process of planning a Maui Fruit Festival for next year, 2021. Um, and trying to figure out how to do a festival online too this year, since yeah. kind of everyone's kind of um, not able to go to festivals. So, um, what I want. To do at that festival is expose people to all of these different, like permaculture movements, eco village movements, um, in a holistic and integrative way. So there's more um, uh, crossing um, community of ideas and sharing um, ideas so that people have are not like um, just know what they know and don't know what other people are doing elsewhere so i want to bring them on across and network and in that sense okay, um okay. yeah definitely, you want to be one of the connectors where you're able to see a lot of what other people are doing and dispersing information kind of what we're doing <laughs> yeah exactly a dispersing catalyzing um, movements, actions, um, doing perma blitz actions um, during the festival, where we go out into um, community orchards, community gardens, um, people's backyards, and actually plant fruit trees, um, and and then have great um, speakers that talk about um, eco villages, permaculture, growing fruit, um, and all the other aspects of a of a um, you know natural living, sustainable living focused lifestyle. Sorry, you went out for a second. What was the last few words you just said? Last um, all the aspects of living a natural, um, sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. And so you're thinking about doing this mainly in Hawaii, did you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess that's a really great place to be. Sustainable. <laughs> Planting food trees, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking about going somewhere potentially warmer. Like, it's definitely wet enough here, which when I was in Texas, it wasn't as wet. Um, although they have their own perks of being almost a tropical place without as wet. Yeah. <laughs> But here there's there's all of that, but not as long of a growing season. So yeah, yeah. That's, do you have other questions that you like that? Um not really. Um what I, I, I was curious about is, um, is you know that thing I mentioned to you the startup weekend. Say it again. Um, Startup weekend business competition. Yeah. Um, it, it would be cool to have something like that um, for eco livelihood um, startup. Yeah, right. And I don't know if you could do that online. Uh, I think it's definitely a conversation to be had. Um, maybe we can tell the people that are watching a little bit more about. Um, that idea around having different like webinars or people streaming in and then doing like pitching ideas. Right, right. Where you basically, um, you could be in your own community or, you know, in the city or wherever you are, and you have an idea that you would pitch um, online. And then you build team members by connecting with other people 
who you have a common interest in and kind of like building a team together. And then for 48 hours, you build your team um, and build your idea in your five minute pitch. And then you pitch it to a panel of judges that then maybe you can win some, some business services um, like marketing or like um, a lawyer or different kind of services that could help you with your startup. And um, this is usually like first, second, third place, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm I'm definitely in. I want to even take this conversation offline <laughs> more of like in depth around <laughs> it. I'm really curious, I guess, because I'm trying to accommodate what this space or is um, intention is for. So I'm curious, like, as far as specialists, what who do you think you need to to help um, as far as getting to where you want to be? And I'm hearing that that looks like connections for you, um, maybe creating more online platforms, more physical platforms, maybe more knowledge in some areas, although it sounds like you're really knowledgeable yourself. But I'm curious as far as like mapping your needs, what does that look like? Um, I think one thing I've been working on is um, something called eco village zoning. Yeah. So something that our, our eco village in, in British Columbia had accomplished, and your eco village in Canada, um, and I think um, in Portland they're trying to recode Portland, and so it's just something like uh, having a network of other people who would be interested in in doing that. I haven't been able to connect enough with people to get a movement started in, in getting a law passed here locally for a, a new zoning category called eco-village zoning. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, perhaps there needs to be, I know with like the animal rights movement, they, they had lobby groups, lobby um, local government to change zoning codes. Um, I mean, sorry, we were doing animal rights, but I mean, we would need something like that perhaps for changing zoning codes. Or, um, yeah, so I want to explain a little bit more of what, what you're saying. And how, this was also a past conversation that you had with us about the Eco Village zoning for people that are just watching. Um, this is a way that you would. Okay, so the issue with land zoning and municipality zoning is that they say, okay, you can have a store here, or you can have a house here, or you can have agricultural space here, or you can have an education system or a school. Yeah. So, but the, oftentimes you cannot have multiple zoning layers in one place. So the issue with that is eco villages are oftentimes all of those things. And so the the municipality is like, wow, what's going on? There's all of these different things that are trying to happen at once. And you're not allowed to do that. You can't have 20, 40, 100 people living there. No, you can't be having uh, farming practices or spiritual practices or mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z that I just named, but in an eco village zoning, there are places that have been doing this successfully and lobbying, and it took a lot of different work. And um, where we left David off last time was saying, like, okay, OUR and British Columbia has done a lot of work around that. They've actually worked a little bit with the RO eco village and Portland that you've named. Um, that's also where Mark Lakeman is, so that's why they're kind of like all in that zone, that area, regional area and um have been helping each other with that so i think that's really exciting and if they can do it yeah. we can find other people to do that and so the in co-housing movement also i think they've been doing a lot of work on that like here in new hampshire i know there's a few like co-housing like group that have been able like to have a zoning specifically for co-housing and I think it's a, it's a little similar to what an eco village wants to to do and create, mm -hmm. like having like m multiple like ho household on the same property using like uh, services uh, collectively. So that's a way. And also like maybe in the future there's something like I I was like also like thinking of 
of going into in depth is like the concept of a campus, mm. but saying like you create an eco a camp college a, campus, yeah, a college campus, but an eco campus. So you could have like, because mainly eco village are living like a place where you can learn about life and about like social like interaction and about your environment. So I, I think like those could be like some some idea that we can maybe go and like uh, dig into those ideas and, and go to town uh, to your town or your your local um, uh, community and, and talk about it, those ideas because because eco village is really a place where you can learn. So it makes sense for people to see like hey like the concept of an eco village it's really similar to a concept of an a college town like a, or a college like campus i mean so that could be also like some some idea yeah i'm curious um as far as you've worked with your eco village mm -hmm. uh la cité of ecologic and um creating good with your municipality and i think there's struggle if you don't do that with your municipality so you say you start a, a project and then you isolate yourself up there and you don't talk to people mm -hmm. in, in the government system or even other people in general outside of the community, what happens there and what, what have you done differently? Yeah, I, I think like the, yeah, one of the key points when you're starting something as a community that is different of what everyone else is like living in the mainstream, it's really to take the time to go talk about what you wanna do for 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 your local community what is your project about and also like being involved in different committee where you you want to establish yourself your community and then you started reaching out to different government officials yeah yeah connecting with different like uh yeah and officials. you served on different boards and yeah. you had other people serving on boards yeah be involved into like local uh, community board like yeah your chamber of commerce or the yeah, green group or yeah. yeah so just just try to put yourself like within those group and you can learn about your local community and you can also like it's a nice place to sell your project and to start talking about it yeah if you have your municipality on board then you can get a lot further with these things like eco village zoning and things like that um, and, and so I just wanted to go back to, uh, David, like what you're talking about and, and say that like another really awesome example of that was the Earthship Biotexture in Taos and they have their video. I think I sent you the le link or at least told you about it, the Garbage Warriors. And it's exactly talking about that. Like, how do you create this, um, this space that is really ridiculous when you first hear about it, especially to uh to municipality of building you know a house out of tires glass <laughs> and cans like it sounds in insane but they found a way to make this a legal thing in taos new mexico and now around the world it's i mean there's definitely a lot of um, restrictions still right to see that and i think another one um which i still want to get you linked up with is uh her name is Jashana and she's been really involved. She was my eco village design teacher in the Netherlands. And she's also um, has been involved with Finhorn. But the reason I'm bringing her up is one of her main places of residence is Hawaii. I don't think she's there right now. I'm not sure where she is. Um, but she yeah, got a we were just um, texting each other this week. We're friends. Really? Oh, nice. oh I'm, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't have to hook, link you guys up. So, so. Yeah, I'm curious. What have you guys been talking about around zoning and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I, I think it's really needed. Um, I I feel like um, I think this time is really giving us all uh, a pause on the planet. Um, and I, I'm I'm actually happy that people are starting to. Um, think about what their priorities are. Um, people are starting a lot of um, home gardens. Um, 
I've noticed in where in my neighborhood and in, in, in the island here. And um, I think as that happens, people are starting to think like they, they'd like to live more connected with the land and more connected with the food that they could grow themselves. Um, less distracted. There's so many things that can distract us now. Um, and I think it's what I feel like I talk with my friends about this is like, focus on what you really want to do in life. Like, and like, if it's to live in a sustainable community, then focus on that. I hear a lot of people talk about things, but then there's not enough like conscious um, focus on it. And that's my desire for myself. And I want to connect with others that want that too. Um, Focusing on action steps? Yeah. Yeah. And, and showing up to when someone's going to have a meeting to focus on um, building a community or like educating about community, like show up there and listen and, and be a participant. I think. Um, I think that's really important so that we feel like we're not alone. Yeah, so you're not only saying like focus action steps and creating it, but also show that support um, with other people that you might want to build something. Right, yeah, so that you don't feel like alone and there's no one else that wants it. Because I know, I know a lot of people want. Um, Jashana gave a talk on Maui and on eco villages, and they were like, she asked, "Who wants to build eco village?" And like, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 people raised their hands. So I know people out there want, want, want it. It's yeah, just about coming together. Yeah, when you ask them to come together, people aren't really showing up. Is that the difficulty you you've been experiencing? Um, it's, I mean, I haven't hoped it it's, it's more like I've been trying to connect with people online mostly. Um, I mean, they showed up to her talk and that was, that was a packed room. Yeah, I wanted a, a little bit give more background of who she is. Maybe maybe you can talk about um, what she's done for Maui and for Hawaii as far as eco ness. She well, she started um, this this website about um, like promoting food for it, and that I and I went to her meeting on that, and that got me really inspired. And um, I think it, it's something that we could have more of like right now i'm i'm working on um to kind of like continue that work on an idea for a um a statewide um food forest land trust yeah and so that we can actually have places where leaders can come together and grow food and um trade and share and give food away so um, and it, it's not going to be sold for development later because it's in a 501 land trust. Wow. It already is, or this is something you'd like to see? I would like to see, yeah. Yeah, that's really great. Um, something else that Jashana did, which is why it came up for in the zoning for me, is um, she really fought hard with a group of people in Hawaii to ban GMOs. I don't remember how oh. successful she was, but I know that it went really far um, and she did a lot of work and there was a lot of barriers for her. Um, and, and I think that's really how she got such a big backing. I mean, it sounds like a lot of people are showing up to her conversations and that's probably one of the reasons. Um, and I was curious if you knew about that and that's where I, really seeing alignment there in Hawaii between you two. Yeah, I was involved with that um, gathering petition for the moratorium of strong remotes. Um, uh, we were successful. We, the voters voted 51% to have a GMO moratorium. Um, so that actually 
went to the Ninth Circuit Court and they decided that it was a state issue that the local government can't decide on those kind of things. Um, so that was rough, but it was also a win because then it said for every state in the country, um, if someone wants to address the genetically engineered um, you know, food issue, they can go directly to their state government and they, they need to address that issue in some way, whether it put it on the ballot for them or allow, allow the citizens to create an initiative process and put it on the ballot for a vote. So then you, after that process, you went back to the Hawaii uh, state government and asked for it again? Yeah, but the state is not uh, cooperating. Um, so it's in Hawaii, we don't have a, an initiative process. Like citizens can collect signatures and put it on the ballot and vote for it. We have to go to our state legislature and ask them to make a bill and, and vote for it. So unfortunately, we don't have enough vote from legislators to, to address the things we need. Um, they did do some things like they made um, a law to restrict GMOs from growing so many, um, so many feet away from like schools. Oh. Um, so that was a win, keeping the pesticide spraying um, at a distance, but it's still not as much as we'd like. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. But again, you know, even going through that process, even though it was a really different cause, uh, now you know, potentially how to do that as far as zoning goes. And that's also really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it could be more, I'm assuming more of a lo local municipality um, as well, right? With the eco-village zoning? Yeah, well, we do have an initial process. I have been thinking about that as putting it on the ballot as an initiative. So we would have to get probably 20,000 signatures and um, see see what happens. Okay. Well, I think like that lady, she, she created like like food forest, like an actual food forest in Hawaii. Deshana. Deshana, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like just a brainstorming idea, maybe creating an event where you can like invite those like people from the government, like to come over and maybe having them like sometimes you need to like trick a little bit like those people and say like, oh, would you come to our like food forest and uh, do a talk about what you are offering like, and you make them come and then you make them like visit your place and explaining what you're doing but at the same place at the same time like you're offering them like the podium so they can talk about what who they are what they are offering for the hawaiian uh, yeah. people that live in their like specific place where they are like doing their legislation yeah and i think this is becoming a really important conversation, which is why I'm holding so much space for it. I think, you know, there's only so much change we can do when creating community and creating space, but um, a lot of places won't even let us do that. So how do we go about, it's not, it's not necessarily that they don't want that, it's just because it's foreign or that there was old laws in, in place that they were never able to look at because they just want the, the, this local city leg legislature was made in a way that um, was the best intent of people. But then, you know, things like eco villages and communities at large um, are really transforming to keep up with the times mm -hmm. of what is needed now versus what was needed 100 or 300 years ago. So um, that's why we need, to, we need to learn how to go in and make it a point for that change. So, um, as far as new people that are jumping on now, uh, we're talking about different what what Whole Systems Network is offering, but also what we want to see as far as that could get on in the future. And 
it seems like David himself is a specialist in different respects as far as <laughs> being involved with different eco-village movements in, in Hawaii. So that's really cool. And um, we're, we're getting close to the end here at 6 p.m. will be the end. But uh, this is a space every th Thursday where you can come and talk about your own projects um what you would like to see here and just discuss conversations with different specialists in the eco village and permaculture movement and uh yeah find ways find ways to collaborate so david do you yeah. have yeah yeah um one thing for the listeners um if you if you take uh, the eco village movement and you break it into different parts you see that there's there's the economy aspect, there's the ecology, there's the belief systems of the worldview, and um, there's the social aspects, social sustainability aspects. And um, you can find that if you can't create an eco-village in, in where you're at, you can take one aspect um, of an eco-village and you can become like an ecopreneur or you know, start an eco livelihood um, in your own in your own location. Um, so you could start a nonprofit to address um, something in your economy. That's like here we we are really dependent on food um, that's shipped in, and so food is a big thing now. People are starting to grow more food and develop local food products, and for example. So there's a lot of things about like primitive energy, um, uh, you know, waste management systems. Um, people are, are helping people install uh, water catchment um, or for, for roof catchment for water for their garden. Um, and there's a lot of social technologies now. A friend of mine, um, Lotus on Hawaii, has a website that um, is talking about social technologies of like nonviolent communication, um, uh, circles, which is a process where everyone gets to, to hear each other with a talking stick and go deep around um, things that's coming up for them. So these type of things can, can be done um, for a business that can bring in income so that people can build um, credit and bring some income. So eventually, if they want to start some sort of uh, residential eco village, they're, they're able to support themselves financially. Yeah, that's really in, uh, insightful. I think. And yeah, why don't we? Oh gosh, <laughs> popping up on the computer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I think eco village you know, that, or even the idea of municipality like this particular subject is a big thing to chew off but yeah let's start small let's figure out different ways uh and different parts of the puzzle that we can really manage and also that's what whole systems network is about as you know david but for the listeners as well like we we see it as a really big picture we want all of those pieces to be immersive and harmonize with each other um as is what what eco village and permaculture ideology is, but yeah, where do we start um, as far as taking care of ourselves, making sure that our lifestyle is more harmonious? Um, basic and, needs, yeah, and, are covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basic needs as far as like financial needs, uh, other capital that we can create and and barter and trade. So yeah, I really appreciate that last insight and. And you just being on the call, I think you really made it today. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, David. See you uh, on Tuesday for our Eco Village, uh, our Eco Livelihood series.